Hi, everybody. Sorry I couldn't join you today. I turned into a pumpkin after midnight, so I decided to record my talk. And this is like my 10th time to try this. So let me go ahead and read my paper for you. In my course in British Renaissance literature this spring, my students and I read narrative poem, Hero and Leander, Christopher Marlowe's retelling of a Greek myth. We started our discussion by talking about the way in which the two young characters meet at a religious festival and fall in love. To draw a parallel to a contemporary scene, I mentioned that their first meeting at a religious festival would be similar to the way one might find a date today at a pub, a state fair, or maybe even a dance party. My students gave me a blank look, which normally meant they didn't get it or didn't agree with what I said. Before trying to explain myself again, I asked them how they might find their dates these days. One said, apps. Immediately, all of the students in class nodded in agreement. When I asked them what kinds of apps they used, they named Tinder, OkCupid, and a few others. They also told me dating apps have gone mainstream and that most of today's young people and not so young people use apps to find dates. Some of my students even told me that they grew up playing dating simulations, which have evolved from allowing mostly men to interact erotically with virtual female characters to attracting diverse users by offering more or less lifelike conversations between users and their digital dates. As dating apps are deploying AI technology more and more, and chatbots are helping users navigate the complicated process of finding suitable dates, it is understandable why an increasing number of people rely on dating apps to find dates. If the process of being attracted to and falling in love with a romantic partner used to be impossible to understand, let alone control, and if it had thus been ascribed to be the work of childish, mischievous, and unpredictable Cupid in Greek mythology, now AI appears to have taken over the work of Cupid. The idea of romance has entered a post-human phase in which AI plays a much more significant role. When I read the call for papers for this International Conference on Artificial Intelligence Humanities, with the focus on the theme of the impact of artificial intelligence on humans and society, I saw it as an opportunity to look into the ways in which AI has been altering the landscape of heteronormative romantic affairs and how the altered landscape is reflected in the literature and film. In the literary and cinematic depictions of AI supported romance, the most dominant character type appears to be the so-called fembots, female robots designed to satisfy the needs of men. Today, I would like to start by reviewing the history of robotic female companions depicted in such literary and cinematic works as Helen O'Loy, Her, Ex Machina, and Blade Runner 2049. While this history of literary and cinematic imagination mirrors the male dominant culture of Silicon Valley, and may even re reflect its implicit desire to revert to the old misogynistic gender politics, the reception of these pieces points to an interesting cultural, psychological, and literary insight into the changing paradigms or algorithms of romantic love and gender relations in our post-human era. Let's first take a quick look at these works in, in case anyone here is not familiar with them or cannot remember their vivid details. Let me share uh, my screen so you can see. Here's a picture of the poem, Hero and Leander. Uh, and Here's a picture of Helen Alloy. Uh, this 
American short story explores the possibility of a romantic relationship between a robot and a human. A medical student and a mechanic, both male, modify a household robot to turn it into a female robot with emotions. Because she's made of alloy, they name her Helen Alloy to suggest that she is the metallic version of Helen of Troy. The robot falls in love with Dave, the mechanic, who is initially unable to accept the romantic affections from a machine. However, persuaded by her unfaltering love, he marries her and lives their happy life together. At Dave's death, Helen Alloy asks their mutual friend Phil to disassemble her metallic structure and bury her remains with her deceased husband. This narrative can be seen as an updated version of the Greek myth about Pygmalion, a sculptor who creates an ivory statue of his ideal woman and falls in love with it, and his wish to marry the sculpture is granted by Venus, who turns it into a real woman. The movie Her. In this Hollywood movie, Theodore, a lonely man about to be divorced from his wife, falls in love with Samantha, a voice activated computer operating system with artificial intelligence. Samantha learns to adapt and evolve to satisfy Theo's needs and preferences. Soon, however, Theo wrestles with not only Samantha's lack of a physical body, but also the fact that she has similar relationships with numerous other male users. Ex Machina. This Hollywood movie depicts the experience, uh, experience of Caleb, a computer programmer who wins an office lottery to spend the week with the company's CEO, Nathan, in a remote estate where female androids with artificial intelligence are being developed. Under Nathan's watch, Caleb falls in love with Ava, an android prototype who uses Caleb to escape from the lab. Blade Runner 2049. In this sequel to Blade Runner, which came out in 1982, a replicant named Kay, a bioengineered artificial human being who lives with a hologram girlfriend named Joy, works as a Blade Runner whose job is to destroy rogue replicants, discovers that a child was born 30 years ago to a replicant mother who died during a C-section. He successfully helps reunite the child and the father, who is also a replicant. The shape of an ideal partner. One of the immediately noticeable aspects in some of these texts is to attempt is the attempt to universalize or normalize the desire for an ideal romantic partner by alluding to Greek or Hebrew ancient texts as if to suggest that said desire is primordial or even fundamental to heterosexual men. Helen Alloy, for example, associates the robot with her Helen of Troy, the ultimate icon of beauty according to Greek mythology. The narrator describes Helen Alloy as, quote, beautiful, a dream in spun plastics and metals. If Helen of, Tro of Troy had looked like that, the Greeks must have been pikers when they launched only a thousand ships, end quote. In Ex Machina, the use of the Latin title, meaning from the machine, hints at a return to ancient Greek tragedy to explore fundamental aspects of humanity. Some of the plot elements are also associated with the Hebrew creation myth. Caleb's seven day va vacation, the main character named Ava and the lone tree in the lab are to be likened to the seven day creation story, Eve and the tree of knowledge. The female characters are no doubt presented as the romantic ideals for most men. Caleb calls Ava the most beautiful woman he has ever seen. And we soon learn that Ava's physical appearance is based on the big data collected by search engines including Caleb's search history. According to Nathan, she is, quote, an extra, extraordinary piece of engineering, 
proportioned as a slender female in her 20s, strikingly beautiful girl. In Blade Runner 2049, Kay's stay home girlfriend, Joy, is manufactured by Wallace Corporation, which promotes AI hologram companions like Joy with this product tag line, quote, everything you want to see, everything you want to hear, end quote. According to the movie script, she is Kay's goddess, girlfriend, geisha, and goddamn bombshell. Ingeniously real in every way except the one that counts. Waiting for him with dinner on the table and drink in hand like a cartoon 60s housewife, end quote. In the case of Samantha in the movie Her, she's portrayed as the first artificial intelligent operating system an intuitive entity that listens to you, understands, understands you, and knows you, end quote. She tells Theo that her DNA is, quote, based on the millions of personalities in, of all the programmers who wrote me. But what makes me me is my ability to grow through my experiences, end quote. For Theo, who is in the middle of divorcing his wife, unable to resolve the end of the marriage, and spending time between video games and internet porn, Samantha is his secretary, girlfriend, counselor, and even a pimp. In fact, she becomes his on-demand, quote, multi-platform gratification engine committed to the parallel processing of all of Psych Theodore's psychosexual needs, end quote. Critics have been quick to point out the male-centered imagination reflected in these and other similar works. Commenting on Ex Machina, for example, Angela Watercutter calls the film a straightforward reproduction of the gender dynamics of Silicon Valley, a male dominated world in which women and as robots represent little more than objects of desire and conduits or muses for masculine creativity, end quote. Ava's power in that sense is, quote, based on her sexuality and ability to flirt manipulatively marking her as a seductress posing as a damsel in distress, end quote. Speaking of the movie Her, Marianne Doan says the movie is part of the fairly insistent history of representations of technology that work to fortify, sometimes desperately, conventional understanding of the feminine. At issue is the security of male fantasies of dominance and control in the face of ever advancing technological capabilities, end quote. In her analysis of the novel, The Stepford Wives, Julie Wask argues that it is a cautionary tale of men made uneasy by the women's movement who opt to replace their wives with artificial doubles, robotic females that fulfill the men's notion of the perfect woman, a fusion of happy domesticity and sexy playmate. The same can, can be said about the literary and cinematic works I have mentioned above. Despite the one-sided heteronormative male gaze and the blunt objectification of female characters in these Hollywood movies, it is nonetheless possible to see them as critical examinations of the male chauvinistic imaginary of AI technology. As Jacobson points out, Nathan and Caleb in Ex Machina become critical parodies of geek masculinity, while Ava, represents a new iteration of Donna Haraway's cyborg politics. Indeed, Ava ultimately outsmarts her brutish, abusive creator and outwits her naive examiner. And as an artificially intelligent machine, surpasses Nathan's control and becomes her own self-creating entity, thus positing a positive techno-feminist vision for a post-human world. These movies end tragically or negatively for the male users of AI-supported technological romance. Caleb is used by Ava. Kay recognizes that Joey is no more than a product designed to suit his needs. And Theo learns that Samantha is the product available to thousands of other men. These movies also demonstrate the failure of men to connect with real women. As Theo's estranged wife says, you wanted to have a wife without the challenges of actually dealing with anything real, end quote. Theo, who spends a lot of time alone in his apartment, 
is not unlike the Japanese otaku, lonely and yet inadequate as a romantic partner for any real woman. How is AI doing as a replacement for Cupid? Thanks to the AI technology deployed in dating simulation apps, people are able to experiment with various virtual dating scenarios, potentially satisfy some of their romantic desires and practice romantic behaviors in virtual reality with no real consequences. Thanks to the AI technology in, used in dating apps, people are able to screen date candidates with increasing precision and engage in romantic affairs backed by data-driven science of love. Going one step further, artificial intelligence might soon be able to provide us with virtual partners who are manufactured and programmed based on precise algorithms and plenty of data. Dave Tuffley predicts that, and I quote, the capacity to distinguish between the real and the virtual may become harder over the next decade as game developers use AI, sophisticated natural language processing to make characters more interactive and realistic. According to Aaron Reed, Aaron Reed, who works at Spirit AI, an AI tech company, while we're still decades away from designing anything as persuasive as Samantha in the movie Her, more human-like characters are going to become pervasive in the coming years, end quote. Evidently, AI-supported romance is already quite real to some people. Besides the widespread use of dating apps and dating simulation apps, a recent news story from Japan demonstrates that parts of human society have already stepped well into the post-human state in terms of romance. We're told that 37-year-old Kondo married a computer-generated hologram of virtual idol Hatsune Miku in 2019 and that when he returns from his job as a school administrator in a Tokyo suburb, he is greeted by the love of his life who recognizes his face and voice with its embedded camera and microphone can, and can respond with simple phrases and songs. Kondo was among 3,700 Japanese who signed up to marry their favorite virtual characters, although the ceremonies have no legal standing. Given the increasing ways in which AI technology intervenes in our romantic activities, we have entered what N. Catherine Hales calls the post-human state, where there are no essential differences or absolute demarcations between bodily existence and computer simulation, cybernetic mechanism and biological organism, robot te teleology and human goals. What MacArthur and Twist say about digisexuality, sexual experiences that depend on advanced technology makes sense given the roles AI has played in our romantic affairs in recent decades. There are several, quote, there are several different stages of digisexuality. First wave digisexuality would be based on mediating technology, enabling sexual connections between two persons. In contrast, second wave digisexuality could be characterized as an immersive technology, depending not on human partners, but on non-human partners such as robots, artificial agents, virtual and augmented reality. Digisexuals would consider technology mediated sexual experiences as essential to their sexual identity, end quote. Now to the conclusion. There's no telling if and when robots will ever become sentient and capable of reciprocal romantic love and even of reproductions. So far, we have mostly tantalizing scenarios of what ifs. Judging from the works we have discussed and the forecasts of AI experts, however, post-human romance comes with poten potential risks. Ex Machina cautions us that AI robots can outwit us and even destroy us. Her and Blade Runner 2049 warn us that romance, romance between humans and non-humans is ultimately illusory. The movies also remind us that finding a romantic partner is only the beginning of a relationship and that takes a lot of work to grow and maintain it through rough patches along the way. As Adrian Rich beautifully puts it, love is, and I quote, a process, delicate, violent, 
often terrifying to both persons involved, a process of refining the truths they can tell each other, end quote. Can AI help us with the process or is it entirely up to us? Thank you.